DFG Science TV, Bonded Concrete, Breaking Tests, How Strong is Ultra Strong? In the last episode, the researchers from Aachen put the pre-stressed steel, known as strands, under tension and cast the concrete beam. Now all that's left to do is to release the pre-stressing force and then the pre-stressed concrete beam will be ready for the test. The full pre-stressing force of about 110 tonnes is still completely on these clamping devices, which you can see here. Now the force will be released again hydraulically. In other words, the hydraulic ram that's pushing against the transverse yoke at the moment will gradually be retracted. This will cause the pre-stressing force to be transferred to the concrete, thus making the beam pre-stressed. First of all, the beam is thoroughly measured and the electronic measurements are applied. Then the researchers put the hydraulic system under pressure again and release the wedge anchors on the transverse yoke. The strands are tensioned on the transverse yoke, and that means that none of the pre-stressing force is in the beam yet. When the beam is pre-stressed, the pre-stressing force in the strands is released, causing the pre-stressing force to be transferred into the concrete through bond. This causes the concrete to be compressed, and will measure the deformation that the concrete undergoes right here. The pre-stressing force in the strands compresses the beam. Since the strands are located in the lower cord, the deformation and compression have the largest values there. The lower model shows how the beam is deformed. Now it's time to begin. The researchers release the force in the strands from the hydraulic system into the pre-stressed concrete beam step by step. Now the beam is gradually starting to be compressed and the strand slip is already measurable. Once the researchers have released a fifth of the pre-stressing force, they interrupt the process and measure the beam again. The researchers transfer the pre-stressing force to the beam step by step, 20% each time. This animation clearly shows the result of the measurements. At the beginning, all of the force is still on the hydraulic system, shown here in green, and the compression of the concrete is still zero. Part of the pre-stressing force is then transferred to the concrete, shown here by the red bar, and the concrete starts to be compressed, as shown by the graph. Eventually, there is no force on the hydraulic system anymore, and the compression of the concrete has reached about 0.1%. The progression of the compression of the concrete shows that about 25 centimetres were required to transfer the pre-stressing force from the strands to the concrete. The strand slip also increases as the amount of pre-stressing force that's been transferred increases, rising to about 0.6 millimetres by the end. Now the researchers know how well the strands are anchored in the concrete. These results provide important information for the dimensioning of pre-stressed concrete beams made of the new building material UHPC. Now the beam is pre-stressed. The team of researchers cuts the protruding ends of the strands off and removes the beam from the pre-stressing bed. After extensive preparation it's finally ready, but it won't survive for long. How much load will the beam be able to withstand in the failure test? Visit DFG Science TV for more information. Awaken the researcher within you.